Welcome to the channel. We have prepared for you as many as four strategies for mastering order flow. However, first we need to understand the mechanics of the cluster chart and understand what certain orders mean for our analysis. This is what this video will be dedicated to. Those of you who are experienced traders and are confident in your understanding can skip straight to the end of the video, where we will focus on setting up the chart to trade the four strategies called RAIN. Pay close attention to what is happening on the chart. This result is possible if you learn the market fundamentals from the first video and the RAIN strategies from the second. So stay tuned and get ready to take your trading to new heights. So, let's get started. Order flow and footprints give you so much information, it kind of adds a third dimension to your analysis. And so that you can take advantage of this and apply the order flow rain patterns, let's describe the terminology we will use and explain it. If you look at the smart DOM and ADAS, you'll see this table. The values in the bid and ask columns are important to us. These are waiting limit orders of traders who want to execute a trade at the respective price level. If the values are below the current price, it means that traders want to buy at a price lower than the current price. If the values are above the current price, it means that traders want to sell at a price higher than the current price. We can see limit orders that have been placed in the past that are waiting for the price to get to them. This is important, if the exchange were set up only like this, the price would never move up or down. It's like an out-of-hours department store, with no customers coming in to buy anything. Without buyers, the seller's inventories won't move. It's business as usual in the stock market. There has to be a second group of market participants who want to get in position now. For example, after the announcement of positive macroeconomic news, most traders will want to enter a long position. They will buy pending limit orders on the ask side, above the current price, and thus push the current price higher. If 100 traders want to enter a long position with one contract each, they will first buy these 9 contracts that someone has previously declared they are willing to sell. 9 traders will get a long position on one contract at the price of 58.50.25. The remaining 91 traders will no longer get a contract at that price, thus the price will move one tick higher. 40 traders will be satisfied here, as there were 40 contracts available to buy at the 58.50.50 price and the price will again move up one tick to 58.50.75. It is the market traders who move the market and the price. They want to be in position and are buying up limit, pending orders that someone has placed earlier. So we already know that you can enter a position in two ways, either as a limit or as a market. In the first case, you enter a pending limit order below or above the current price, depending on whether you want to open a long or a short position. The advantage is that you will get a fill at the exact price where you placed your order. The disadvantage is that the price may not reach your order at all. It will simply turn early and your order will remain in the market as a pending order. And you are not in the trade. You will see pending orders in what is called the book. In ADAS, we call it smart DOM. Pending orders are visible until the market trades them, that is, until the participants entering market orders arrive or until the person who placed the limit order withdraws it from the market and cancels their order. The second way is called market. Simply put, it means I want to open a position now. The advantage is that you are guaranteed to enter the position, the price will not go anywhere in the meantime, you will not wait. The disadvantage is that the entry price may vary slightly depending on how many traders will be thinking like you and want to open a position here. We explained this a while ago on how market traders buy pending limit orders. Footprint is a candle where we have information about how many contracts have traded at the respective price level on the bid side, that is, on the left, and on the ask side, that is, on the right. Footprint provides a detailed view of market activity by showing the volume of trades executed at specific price levels in a given time frame. This is information about the trades made. If a candle or footprint closes, the values will never change. Unlike traditional candle charts, which only show price movements, Footprint charts reveal both buying and selling pressure. Each number gives information about how many contracts were traded on the bid side and how many on the ask side at a given price level. If you enter a long position at price 20,490 via a market order and buy one contract, the value in the footprint at the respective price level will increase by one. We already know that market traders buy pending limit orders that are above the current price. Remember that trades happen on the right side in the smart DOM? We're getting to one of the most important messages. So the right side of the footprint, referred to as ask, represents passive sellers or aggressive buyers. These are either pending limit sales or immediate market purchases. 
The right side, asks, are the aggressive buyers and the passive sellers. Market traders buy from limit traders. The left side of the footprint, referred to as bids, represents passive buyers or aggressive sellers. These are either pending limit buys, below price, or immediate market sells. The left side, bids, are aggressive sellers and passive buyers. Market traders sell to limit traders. There are never more sellers or buyers in the market. In order for someone to buy, there must be another party willing to sell. This is important to remember. In a footprint, there may be more trades executed on the right side, the ask side, than on the left side, the bid side. Volume is the total number of contracts, not their value, that have changed hands, either at one price level or within one footprint on a given time frame. For example, at this price level 20490, the volume was 23 contracts because 9 contracts were traded on the bid side and 17th on the ask side. Volume is always a positive number, in rare cases zero. It is the sum of bids and asks. If we add up all the values on the left and right for this footprint, we get the number 67. Since this is a minute chart, the number tells us that a total of 67 NASDAQ contracts were traded in one minute. Delta is the difference between the left and right side of the footprint. It can be any positive or negative number, or zero. Delta is calculated by subtracting the left side, bids, from the right side of the footprint, asks. Therefore, if more asks are traded, the delta value is positive. If more bids are traded, the delta value is negative. And if the right side of asks equals the number of contracts on the bid side, delta is zero. The most common interpretation of delta is that if delta is positive, aggressive buyers dominated the market. To reiterate, the right side, the asks, are either aggressive buyers using market orders, or passive sellers who have placed pending limit orders. By now, you understand that the most common interpretation of delta is wrong and I recommend you forget about it as soon as possible, otherwise you'll be completely confused. Notice this footprint, the highest asks value, 18, is almost at the very top of the footprint. That doesn't mean there were the most aggressive buyers. Price here has hit a big pending order on the right. At the 20495 level, a pending order to sell a large number of contracts halted the move up. It absorbed the aggressive buyers. So Delta doesn't say whether there was more aggressive buying or selling at any given time, please be very careful. Absorption is another concept we encounter in footprints. Note this footprint, which has extremely high values on the bid side at the bottom of the candle. Do you think the big traders would be interested in getting quickly into a short position down here? Of course not. It's the aggressive retail traders, for example, who have indicators confirming that the market is in a downtrend. They were probably speculating on a break of the prior low, on a continuation of the trend. But they got in the way of pending limit orders on the left side of the footprint, the bid side. The big traders here had large orders to buy a high number of contracts, absorbing the retail sellers. They simply entered the short position late. Thus, where they were selling, the large traders were already willing to buy at that price. We say that uninformed retail provided liquidity to the large traders. They filled their large positions and as you can see, the market went up from there. The downtrend ended, at least for a while. However, the limit orders on the left don't just mean that the big traders were entering long positions here. They may have been convinced that the move was already showing signs of fatigue and began to close their positions. They had targets here. And closing a short position means having a buy order in the market. Point of control is the level on the footprint where the most volume was traded. In ADAS, you can have such a level highlighted in bold type accompanied by a box. You can even choose a different color for the text. The point of control, or POC, is the unique information that is most often and most easily obtained with the cluster chart. Traders who rely on a candlestick chart do not have this information. It is another clue that tells us what has happened on a candle in a given time frame. The POC has this footprint virtually at the top of the candle. And, as we said, we can interpret it to mean that buyer absorption occurred here. Another important phenomenon to notice is what the very top and bottom of the footprint looks like. If one of the values is zero, we are talking about what is called finished business. This can be interpreted as the other party was no longer interested in trading below the lowest or above the highest level. The footprint is as if clean or finished. Conversely, if there are non-zero values on the top or bottom of the candle on both the bids and ask side, we are talking about so-called unfinished business and the price is likely to return here. The last concept we will explain is imbalances. 
Imbalances show us which party at the relevant level was controlling the market, whether it was the bids or the asks. In the context of the price movement, we can then infer if, for example, other and more aggressive traders jumped in and wanted to participate in the strong move by aggressively buying long positions. In that case, the footprint will show a lot of green values on the right side. If market sellers were aggressively jumping in, you will see red values on the left side. Remember, we read imbalances diagonally because we can move up from one price by aggressively buying at least one tick above the current price. Conversely, we can move down from the current price by aggressively selling one tick below the current price. Now we will look at how to set up the chart correctly so that it is usable for footprint rain patterns. First make sure you have downloaded the ADAS platform from the link in the description. Now, there are three ways to get to the cluster chart view. Either click on the mode icon in the menu here and select clusters. Or note you can use the hotkey shift plus K. Again, you can return to the candlestick chart either via the mode icon or the shift plus C hotkey. The most convenient way, however, is to simply turn the wheel on your mouse until you see the cluster chart. Let's go into the chart settings and show a few important adjustments. On the first tab at the bottom, you can turn off the transition between candle and cluster mode here by disabling the auto transform candles to clusters feature. A value of 25 tells it when to turn candles into footprints. The higher the value, the wider the candle must be to become a footprint. Finally, the hide clusters panel option sets whether the panel will be visible to toggle the different display ed rays. We will have the cluster chart set fixed and therefore we can hide the panel. It's a good idea to turn off, minimize volume values. This way, you see exact values in footprint, not just 1k, 2k, or so. The second tab, cluster settings, is where we'll do most of the setup. Change content to bids, ask centered. I'll tell you why in a moment. Color scheme is good to change to none, because we won't need any profile. Change border type from body to candle so we can see both the candle body and its wicks. This will show where the candle has closed. Check border color by direction, then you will see the wicks. Now it's clear why I changed the content setting to bids, ask centered. If I left the standard bid ex ask, then the wick would cross the ex character. And we can turn off the direction indicator width. In the maximum level section, select border color white, then we will see the POC level with a white border. We are getting into the imbalance settings. We activate them with this checkbox. Let's change the colors for the left side of bids, I choose red, and for the left side of asks, I choose green. So the colors will represent the aggressive parties, red for sellers and green for buyers. Important, through it you can set how strong of an imbalance you want to have displayed. The standard value of 150 means that one side should be at least one and a half times the value of the other side. We might be interested in imbalances where one side is at least three times the value of the other. We do that by raising the imbalance rate to 300, because it is a percentage. Now we need to know what the volume and delta values look like on each footprint. I prefer the candle statistics indicator. It is simpler as it only shows volume and delta of the candle by default, which will be enough for us. I turn off the background and increase the font size to 16 points. If you followed the procedure I did, your chart should look like this. We'll save this setup as a template so that next time we have it available at a click. Now you can move on to the second part of the video, where we look at rain trading strategies. This next step will provide you with actionable insights and practical applications to enhance your trading skills. Let's take your trading journey to the next level.